Hello there! In this lesson, we're gonna get into learning how to make more interesting motions and animations utilizing a tool in After Effects called the Graph Editor. Before we get into actually using the tool, it's important that we first understand the different types of ways that values and properties can change over time by looking at the four types of keyframes that exist. We're gonna visualize movement of keyframes by looking at this ball bouncing back and forth with this graph I have created. The first one is the linear keyframe. This is a keyframe type created by default. When you make a new keyframe, it is automatically linear and is represented by a diamond symbol in the timeline. As you can see, the ball moves straight from the bottom to the top and back in a linear fashion. The speed does not change at all and remains constant. The next type of keyframe is Easy Ease. You can see that the graph has now started to curve a little bit. The ball starts off a little slow, easing into the movement, moves straight, and then slows down a little, easing into a pause before moving back down again. Easy Ease keyframes are represented with a little hourglass symbol on the timeline. The next keyframe we're going to look at are Bezier keyframes. These automatically generate curves in the keyframes in a slightly different fashion from the Easy Ease keyframes. They appear as circles on the timeline. Lastly, we have Hold keyframes. As per the name, it holds the current value until the next keyframe. So it basically says, do absolutely nothing until you encounter another keyframe. It is represented by a square shape in the timeline. And with this, now we have a basic understanding of the types of keyframes. So now let's open up After Effects and start looking at the graph editor. First, we need to make a composition we can work with. So I'm gonna hit here, make a new composition. All the settings look good, so I'm just gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna start by making a shape layer. So I'm gonna right click our timeline, go to new, shape layer. And then I'm going to open this up, hit add, and I'm going to add an ellipse. Right now we can't see anything, so I'm gonna go up to add again, hit add fill, and I will make our ellipse just a little bit bigger. So now we can see it a little better. So now I'm gonna animate the scale. So I'm gonna click on the shape layer, hit S. I'm gonna click on the keyframe here and drag this to zero so we can start off with nothing. And then I'm going to go to one second, set the scale back to 100, and then go to two seconds and set one back to zero. So now we have a simple animation of a circle growing and shrinking. And it looks like this. Next, you can open the graph editor by clicking this graph button right here. And what this will do is that it will change your timeline to a graph. So I'm gonna click on this and we'll see that now the timeline has changed. Right now the graph is empty, but if we click on the animated scale that we have, we're now gonna see a graph appear. Here the Y axis represents the scale values and the X axis represents time. So we start at our first keyframe with zero and then it moves up to a scale of 100 at one second and then it moves back to zero at two seconds. This motion is represented by the graph. If you accidentally click away somewhere or maybe you're zoomed out or your graph isn't in view well, what you can do is select all of your keyframes and go to this button at the bottom that says fit selection to view. And what this will do is it'll zoom in on the keyframes that you have selected. Alternatively, if you go to this button on the right, fit all graphs to view, what it will do is that it will squeeze all the graphs that you have into view here. So this is a little bit big for me, so I'm just gonna zoom back out a little bit. Sorry, zoom back out a little bit. There we go. So we're gonna start by making these keyframes easy ease. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna select our three keyframes and go to this button on the right, right here, Easy Ease. So I'm gonna click this. You can also change them to Easy Ease by hitting F9 on your keyboard. So you'll notice that once we make them Easy Ease, these yellow handles are gonna appear. You can drag these handles to adjust the shape of the curve. Oops, I'm selecting two. Just gonna select this one and now we can adjust the shape of the curve. So let's say for example, I want our circle to grow bigger a little bit faster. In other words, I want the slope of this to be steeper. I can take this handle and I can drag it to the left. And if I wanted to stay in a straight line, I can hold shift while dragging it so it'll stay like this. And alternatively, if you want both of these handles to move in the same direction. So right now this one is pointing down and this one is pointing to the right. If I want them to move together, you can hit alt and it'll automatically have them move together from now on. So I'm gonna stretch this this direction. Now if I watch our animation, we're gonna see that now the circle grows a little faster and the animation is a little bit more interesting. We can also adjust this curve by actually adding keyframes. So let's say I wanna change the shrinking animation right now. I'm going to move our time point over here and I'm going to make a new keyframe. 
And now I can just drag this one downwards and adjust the handles as I'd like. Maybe let's say like this. And now we have this animation. Oops, like this. I highly recommend playing around with this graph yourself so you can get a good sense of what kind of graphs create what sorts of motions. So for example, let's say I can make a new keyframe here and then I could twist this completely. So maybe have it go like this. Now we'll get this sort of like squiggly line in our graph. And if we look at this motion, what it is is that our scale goes up, it goes back down, and then it goes up again. So if you view what this looks like, now we have this little sort of, how do I explain this, bouncing animation as it grows. So for now, I'm going to delete the two keyframes I made. I'm just going to click delete, and then I'm going to select all of our keyframes, and I'm going to set them back to linear for now, uh, which is this one right here. Convert selected keyframes to linear. So up until now, we've been looking at something called the value graph, as it's a graph representing the values that we're animating. There's one more type of graph we can view called the speed graph. So if you go back to our bottom tab here and we click on this little chart looking thing and open it up, you can see that we have edit value graph checked. And what we're now going to look at next is this edit speed graph. So I'm going to click on this edit speed graph here. And this graph represents the acceleration or the rate of change over time. If we go back to this little tab and then we go to show reference graph, it'll display the graph that we aren't looking at, in this case, the value graph. So we have our reference graph, the value graph in orange here, and then we have our speed graph in red. So looking at these two graphs at the same time helps us get a better picture of what's going on. So because right now the rate of change is constant, our slope is linear, our speed graph in red here appears at a flat line. It stays at a constant rate of 100% per second, first positive, and then once we hit this point and it shrinks, it goes down to negative 100% per second. So now if we select our keyframes and we set them to easy ease, I'm going to select all of them. You can hit F9 or you can hit this easy ease button over here. We'll see that now our speed graph takes on the shape of these two humps. And if you click on any of the keyframes, you'll see that actually now we have these yellow handles here again. And you can adjust the shape of the graph here as well, like this. You can also move these handles up and down, although I typically don't do that as it ends up with these sort of weird shapes in the, in the value graph. Personally, when I keyframe, I like to work with a combination of both the value graph and the speed graph. And I recommend messing around with both of them in your own time to see how they affect motion and to find a workflow that you feel comfortable with. So now I end up with this sort of animation. So now I'm going to head back to our regular timeline by hitting this graph editor button again. And then we can try keyframing the position of the circle as well. So I'm just going to click on our shape layer and hit P and pull up the position. And I'm going to create a keyframe at zero seconds. Let's say it's at the bottom. And then I want it to move back up. And then the third keyframe, I will move it back down. So now if we click on the position and then we open up our graph editor here, because position is made up of both an X and a Y value, we end up with two graphs here. The red one is the X position and the green one is the Y position. So first actually I'm going to go back to our value graph. So I'm going to click on the graph type here, hit edit to value graph, and then I'm going to remove our reference graph to make this a little simpler to look at. So I'm going to select all of our keyframes and I'm going to set them to easy ease. And something you'll notice is that unlike when we animated the scale, the position doesn't seem to have any yellow handles attached to the keyframe. The only thing I can do is literally move the keyframe, but I'm stuck with whatever graph shape After Effects generates. So what we can do here is separate the X and the Y position into their own separate properties by hitting this X, Y, Z button, this separate dimensions button on the bottom tab. What happens when we do this is now our position is going to be split into X position and Y position. And this is also going to reset our keyframes. So make sure you do this before doing a bunch of keyframing work or else you're going to lose it all. So now if we go back to the Y position that we animated, so I'm just going to click on our Y position here. And if we select all these keyframes and easy ease them, 
You'll see that now the yellow handles appear. I typically almost always separate the X, Y, and when I'm working with 3D Z positions as well when keyframing, for maximum control and easier visibility of the graphs, as it can get pretty crowded and hard to view when you have a lot of keyframes and maybe two or three graphs going on at the same time. You can also select multiple properties at the same time to view their graphs together. So I can select I or X and Y using shift or control to select them both. And I often do this when I want to apply the same animation to multiple properties. So for now, I'm just going to animate this. I typically like to work with a speed graph, so I'm just going to swap to speed graph for a moment, drag these handles to the left. And now we have our completed animation. Just quickly, I forgot to mention that for those of you who are using After Effects 2023 and beyond, they have updated the program. So now you can have the X, Y, and Z position separated by default. So if this is something that you would like, just go up to Edit, Preferences, and go to General. And here there should be a box for you to check default position properties to separated dimensions. I like to keep this one checked. It's up to you. Even if you're not in 2023, you can always manually separate the dimensions every time and there's no problem. So using the graph editor takes a lot of practice to get used to, but this is going to become the basis of about any type of motion that you see, so it's really important. There are many third-party scripts out there that help make the keyframing process easier. Two of which that I can think of off the top of my head are Ease and Wiz, which is a free one, and Flow, which is around 30 USD. I'll link both of them in the description for those who are interested. I personally don't use any third-party scripts and I like to work directly with the graph editor since I find that I get a lot of fine grain control during this, but these are both fantastic options for anyone looking to speed up their workflow. I'm sure that there are more scripts that I don't know about as well, so if you have any recommendations, please let me know in the comments. That's all for this lesson and thanks for watching! If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any specific topics you'd like me to cover in a future video. Alright, thanks, goodbye!